Video Sports and the TSSAA present the 1993 Clinic Bowl from Dudley Field on the campus of Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee. It's the Class AA Tennessee State Championship game between the Milan Bulldogs and the Sweetwater Wildcats. I'm Steve Lusk along with Billy Ringold and Greg Lusk to bring you today's game. Billy, two schools with great football traditions. As far back as I can remember, these two schools have been winning football games. Both have had state championships back in the 70s. Just tremendous tradition. And this year they've had great seasons. Milan is 12-0, Sweetwater is 13-1. They've been ranked 2-3 and three in the polls for most of the year. Obviously both these teams are very talented. Well, they've got great athletes. Milan likes to run the football. They have James Bonds, uh, Mr. Football finalist this year. He's a great tailback. He's rushed for over 900 yards. He runs behind a very good, talented offensive line. Their key, though, is their defense. It's stifling, uh, extremely impressive. Dwayne Lee, Deshaun Skates, Elton Williamson, Marcus Spinks, you're going to hear these names tonight. They play great team defense. Sweetwater is very quick, uh, a very fast ball club. And they're a little more balanced. Uh, Heath Hawkins and Tyson Neal have combined for over 1,600 yards rushing. Quarterback Jeffrey Upton has thrown for nearly 1,200 yards. Defense is also their strength if you talk to their coaching staff. They have great defensive ends and Harry Irvin and Chris Francis, a good linebacker and Larry Arwood, and the secondary, Jeremy Parker, is a very fine player. And as you would expect for two teams to get this far, they're very well coached. Two great coaches on the field tonight will be coaches with a total of 620 career coaching wins. Coach John Tucker is a legend in West Tennessee from Milan in his 25th year there. He is 313, 107, and 2 in his brilliant career at Milan. Coach Bill Dupes has only been at Sweetwater for 11 years as the head coach, but he has 307 career combined coaching wins. And so both of these guys bring just a lot of experience to the table. Before the game, we had the opportunity to talk to both of these coaches about the game. First, let's hear from Coach John Tucker of Milan. We're going to play mighty good defense, and they've got so many things to stop on offense. I don't know if we can or not. But we're going to play good defense, and we're going to have a little offense, too. Good kicking game. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. And now let's listen to Coach Bill Dupes of Sweetwater. I think Keith Russ will be try to take uh, Bonds out of their game plan as much as possible, try to neutralize him, as well as the quarterback. Uh, we have got to be able to handle our defense with some kind of success. Our defense is very exceptional. And turnovers uh, be a big key, and I think it'll be a real tight ball game. Good luck tonight, Coach. Thank you. Joining us today is Greg Lusk. Coach Lusk, uh, what's your reflections on this game? Milan offensively will line up in a straight T formation, some eye bone. Uh, this should provide for an interesting power versus power matchup versus Sweetwater's wide tackle six defense. Sweetwater has a balanced eye formation offensive attack that uh, has to face a very fundamentally sound 5-2 defense of Milan. Milan must be able to control this line of scrimmage against the six-man front play action passes will work effectively for them if they can establish this run Sweetwater has to avoid the interceptions if they can they have an explosive offensive attack that can score from anywhere on the field so Milan's defense also has to have a controlled pass rush because Sweetwater's quarterback can run effectively and with the experience of these two uh, head coaches on the field you can expect just about any and everything <laughs> from Oak Ridge, Luther Wilson Oak Ridge, Steve Pyatt Clinton, Steve Long Clinton, Gary Ellis Oak Ridge, and Jack Hamlet Farragut. They are assembled on the field with the captains for the respective teams. For the Sweetwater Wildcats, the captains are Jeffrey Upton, 
number 70, John Campbell, number 82, Richie Jenkins, and number 74, Harry Irvin. For Milan across the way, those captains who are representing the other seniors out on the field, number 82, Dwayne Lee, number 10, Kirk Moore, number 70, Van Smith, and number 25, who is Maurice Ivory. Let's go down to the field for the toss of the coin. National Gas Company, National Area Junior Team of Ivory, Captain Ivory, Captain Smith, Captain Moore. Captain Lee, is that right? All right. All right, gentlemen, this is Captain Upton. This is Captain Campbell. Uh, Captain Jenkins. Captain Irwin. Shake hands, gentlemen. Good All right, gentlemen, Mr. Danny of the Clinic Bowl is going to do the coin toss. You will call it. Call it in here. We'll let it hit the carpet and see what happens. Okay? I got heads. Okay, gentlemen, it is heads. Want to want to defer? Wants to defer. Okay. Why it's going to defer? Which goal do you want to defend? Don't offend the goal here. Okay. If you'd stand over there, please. On my Nordic track, you should give Nordic track a try. Call now for a free video and brochure. won the coin toss for this class AA state championship game. They deferred their decision till the second half, and so they're going to tee it up and kick it off into the wind as Sweetwater elected to receive and take the wind in the first quarter. Looks like James Bonds, that uh, outstanding Mr. Football finalist who is a running back and defensive back extraordinaire, is going to be kicking it off deep to receive for Sweetwater. Looks like 23, Tyson Neal. Tyson's averaging just under 30 yards per return, so he's had a very good year returning the football on kickoffs. And we're underway in the clinic bowl as the kick comes to Neal at the 12, and they reverse it. Coming back to the right side, and good running room out here at the 25-yard line to the 30. Good block at the corner all the way outside. Running with that football is number 20, Heath Hawkins. He took the reverse from Tyson Neal at about the 12-yard line. And the flow was going to the right side of the far side of the field. And Hawkins came all the way back across the grain, picked up good yardage out to the 37-yard line, where it'll be first and 10 for Sweetwater. Let's set the offense for the Wildcats. The line, Richie Jenkins, Jason Gibby, Chris Talent, John Campbell, Blake McCamus, and Chris Francis. The quarterback is Jeffrey Upton. The receivers, Jeremy Parker and Jamie Upton. The running backs, Larry Arwood and Tyson Neal. First and 10 for the Wildcats. The give is to the first man through there. It was probably the fullback, Arwood. Correction, Jerome Irvin started the game at fullback, and he carried the ball on the first play, number 25, and he picked up a couple of yards, eh, just one yard really, off the right side. It'll be second down and nine for the Wildcats. Penalty flag on the play. Upton rolls out. He's going to be sacked back at the 30-yard line. The ball is loose, and Sweetwater's got it. Heads-up play that time coming back to pick up the ball by Jeremy Parker as the ball came loose as the pressure was applied to Upton. But there is a flag on the play, and let's see. The initial indication is of illegal motion. And it will probably be declined. Have an illegal shift on the offense. It's declined. Third down. Loss of about 
five on that play. It'll be third and 14 as the official indicated the illegal shift that took place. And so they'll take the defensive stand there for Milan. Again, there's motion. A little bit of miscommunication in the early going. The officials gather to discuss it. A dead ball, false start on the eye for five yards, third down. Let's set that defensive lineup for Milan. On the front wall, Elton Williamson, Jimmy McCary, Marcus Spinks, Van Smith, and Tim Perry. The linebackers, Deshaun Skates and Dwayne Lee. The defensive back, Shane Cowan, Maurice Ivory, Brad Davis, and James Bonds. Third and about 19 to go from the 28-yard line for the Sweetwater Wildcats. Here in the first series, we've already seen Sweetwater get out of their base formation. The eye, they run some split backs. They even ran a little one back. They have not got off the start they wanted to here in this first series, obviously. Also Milan looked like they were in a 4-3 alignment and smelled that run immediately. And in there on the tackle was Dwayne Lee bringing a fourth and long situation. Back to punt is the other Upton, Jeremy, excuse me, Jamie Upton. Back to receive for Milan is Bonds. Punt is away from Bonds. It bounces at the 35, inside the 30, takes a Sweetwater roll, and is down by Parker at the 26-yard line with 9.53 to go in the first quarter. It'll be Milan on offense from that point. Let's set the Milan Bulldog offense with Jacob Bolton at the quarterback. The running backs, Andre Stewart, James Bonds, and Jeff Massey. The ends, Kirk Moore and Jimmy Robinson. The, deep, the offensive line, Brian Richardson, Gary Johnson, J.T. McKinney, Tommy Cunningham, and Michael DePriest. First and 10 from the 26 for Milan. Give is to number 28 off the right side, Jeff Massey, and he was met at the 28-yard line with a thunderous hit. Harry Irvin on his tackle. Let's set the Sweetwater defense. It's Harry Irvin. Davey Upton, Jerome Irvin, twin brother of Harry, David Woodruff, Richie Jenkins, and Chris Francis across the front. The linebackers, Larry R. Wood and John Campbell, and the defensive backs, Jamie and Jeffrey Upton, the brothers, and Jeremy Parker at safety. And just as Sweetwater showed us something a little different with the uh, split backs and the one-back formation, Milan comes out with a one-back offense of their own. Andre Stewart carries it right up the middle and got decent yardage out to the 32-yard line, where it'll be third and three. Third and three for the Bulldogs. The Wildcats could not convert on their third and long opportunity. Crisscross in the backfield. Andre Stewart staying home that time was number 51, David Woodruff, from his defensive guard position. He had some help over there as well on that uh, right side of the defensive line, and they stopped Stewart after really no gain on the play. And so to be fourth and a long three from the 32-yard line. Back to punt for Milan. That should be McKinney, but let's see. There may be a change there. I believe that's James Bonds punting. L looks like Bonds has dropped back to, to a punt. There was uncertainty about who the punter was going to be before the game, and Bonds kicks it away to Upton, who takes it at the 35 on a fair catch. It'll be first and 10 for Sweetwater from that point. Now let's go down on the field and meet the Sweetwater cheerleaders. Hi, I'm Laura Cannon, and I'm a sophomore at Sweetwater High School. Get one, kids! Hi, my name's Mama Blankenship, and I'm a senior at Sweetwater High School. Go, Hi, my name's Ian Clark, and Go Cats! Hi, I'm Sadie Chapman, and I'm a junior at Sweetwater High School. Go Cats! Hi, my name is Sarah Whitehead, and I'm a freshman at Sweetwater High School. Go Cats! Hi, I'm Sadie Chap
we were told by both coaches that defenses were their strength. And this first series bears that out, definitely. Both defenses have gotten off the mark quick. Sweetwater has it in play, first and 10 from their 36, actually. It's just outside the 35-yard line. Upton looking toward Parker, way overthrown. Parker went down about four yards and stopped, and Upton's timing pass was over his head. Good coverage out there in the secondary for the Bulldogs. It looks like Milan is aligning itself in a 4-3, maybe to uh, be able to get some better drops into the passing zones for the linebackers and uh, shut down some of the explosive offense. Now here they're in the classic 5-2 with the two defensive ends and, our, and uh, two linebackers in the middle. This pitch is to Neal. And Neal, as he wanted to make the turn around the right corner, slipped and actually lost about a yard back to the 35-yard line. So it'll be third and 11, and so far, Sweetwater's just not been able to generate anything against this Bulldog defense. Well, they are a little out of sync right now, and Milan has a lot to do with that. Maurice Ivory did a great job that time of playing leverage and turning the play back in, and there was really nowhere to go as, as uh, uh, Tyson Neal got to the corner. Now Milan's in the 4-3 defense in a passing, obvious passing situation as uh, Skates and Dwayne Lee are joined by Williamson at the linebacker position. Pressure is put on by the defensive end, Tim Perry, number 14, who came in there and sacked Upton all the way back at the 23-yard line. I believe it's where they're going to mark it. And it'll be fourth and long, and Sweetwater will have to punt once again. That had a, kind of a screen look to it, and I have a feeling that Van Smith might have seen the same thing and got over there and broke that up. Uh, and then Jeffrey Upton had no, nothing else to do with it but to eat it. From number 10, Jamie Upton. Jamie Upton will punt, and Bonds is deep to receive. He is standing right now at about his own 40 to 43 yard line so Milan should get good field position out of this uh, punt high snap handled well by Upton the punt is toward the near sidelines bounces at the 48 yard lines and skips out of bounds at the 42 where it'll be first and 10 with 623 to go in the first quarter for the Milan Bulldogs let's go down to the field and meet the Milan Bulldog cheerleaders my name is Jennifer Bryan I'm a senior at Milan Bolton is the quarterback, takes the snap from center, fakes to Bonds, rolls out, wants to pass it. Now he does hit the flat, picked off by Upton. He's got daylight in front of him, but Bolton knocks him out of bounds, saving the touchdown. And so the first big play of the game on defense that could turn the tide here is made by number 10, the defensive back, Jamie Upton, out in the right flat, picking off Bolton's pass. Tremendous read by Jamie, anticipated the pass, stepped in front. He had three INTs during the season, fine defensive back. He's got good hands on both sides of the ball, a good receiver too. And now the resolve of the Bulldog defense will be tested sorely as Sweetwater takes over on the 28-yard line with 6.14 to go in the first quarter. And the first serious threat of the game is being uh, offered here by Sweetwater. They align in a split-back formation. Hawkins had joined uh, Neal in the backfield. Long pass downfield to Parker, touchdown! Sweetwater! 28-yard touch, 28 touchdown pass from the quarterback Jeffrey Upton to Jeremy Parker, his wide receiver, and it's six to nothing, Sweetwater. Excellent route by Jeremy Parker. This year when he caught passes, it was they were big plays. Uh, average almost 28 yards per reception. Parker should be holding on the extra point attempt. The snapper is number 
71, I believe, Jason Gibby. The kick is up by Godin, and the kick is good. And with 6.08 to go in the first quarter, it's Sweetwater 7, mile of nothing. The touchdown drive, one play, 28 yards. Jeffrey Upton to Jeremy Parker, a beautifully, beautifully thrown ball. At Parker really was the only one who had a chance to, uh, to pass. He threw it to the corner. Of course, it was set up by the turnover. Godin will kick it off, and he's going downfield to the right side to Andre Stewart. The ball skips out of bounds at the 14-yard line on the AstroTurf surface of Dudley Field here at Vanderbilt. And a penalty flag is thrown. And I think the ball will be moved to the 35-yard line. Let's go down to the official on the field and uh, hear his call. Okay, instead of electing to take the ball at the 35, the Bulldogs have elected to have Godin kick it over from the 35-yard line instead of the 40. And uh, so we'll do it once again with Godin and his Sweetwater Wildcats having taken a 7 to nothing lead over the Milan Bulldogs. It seemed like Milan had kind of things going their way. Uh, a little bit of uh, defensive momentum. Uh, Sweetwater wasn't getting anything going on offense. But boom, the big defensive play, and right on top of that, the big offensive play. Godin drills it deep, all the way back to the eight yard line. Coming up the middle with it, that's uh, number 82 still on his feet out of the 29 yard line. Dwayne Lee, deep to receive that kick, who took it all the way from the eight to the 29, a 21 yard return. It'll be first and 10 for the Bulldogs time now for Milan to get settled down. I think Sweetwater had a little bit of the jitter starting out. Of course, they've gotten over that now after the big turnover. Milan needs to get into their rhythm and get into their offensive game plan. They come out in the eye bone, which they've shown a little bit of this year. Three backs aligned in a row. Load blocking on the right-hand side, and Bonds carries it off the right side to about the 34-yard line depending exactly upon where they spot it. Pick up a four, maybe five yards on the play. Good job by Gary Johnson and Michael DePriest opening up the hole there on the right side for James Bonds to get through. Give him four, it'll be second and six for the Bulldogs. Eye bone or three back eye formation once again with two tight ends. The give is to Bonds again off the right side. He gets four, five, six, and then a little extra effort. But they're going to mark him down back at the 36-yard line. Pick up a three on the play. It'll be second and third three. As we mentioned in the introduction, Bonds is over 900 yards this year, about nine yards per carry. Got an excellent block from his fullback, Deshaun Skates. It's Skates, Stewart, and Bonds in the backfield with Bolton, the quarterback. Third and three. Give us to Bonds off the left side this time, and he's looking for the first down. He got near it, but I don't know if he got enough. It looks to be just a little bit short, Steve. Good defensive stand that time by number 74, Harry Irvin, among others, on the right side of the Sweetwater defense. And they're going to say he's just a little bit short. It'll be fourth and less than one. Punting unit seems to be coming on here. Kirk Moore, number 10, is the long snapper. Bonds gets the punt away, hitting it at his 30. It drives up and back to the 22. He bobbles the ball and falls on it inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. Where to be first and 10 for Sweetwater with 3.34 to go in the first quarter. They lead 7-0 over the Bulldogs of Milan. Good job that time of Milan's punting unit to establish field position. They've given Sweetwater the long field and and the other two possessions that Sweetwater's had the ball with a long way to go, but haven't been very successful. So I, I think it's good strategy in, in this early in the game to go ahead and kick it 
and uh, put your defense on the field and try to stop and get the ball back in good field position. Upson brings them up with the split backs. Looks like Hawkins and Arwood in the backfield. Give us to Arwood, the fullback, right up the middle, and he is a load to bring down. Kerry Tackler's with him out to the 25-yard line. Picked up six on the play. It'll be second and four. Good run by Arwood. Larry has gained his fame this year on his linebacker spot, but there you get an idea that he also is a very talented fullback. Does a good job blocking and a good job uh, getting those tough yards up the middle. I didn't see everybody in on the tackle for Milan, but I, I did see Elton Williamson in there as one of the primary tacklers. Now they're in the I formation with Arwood, the fullback. Pitches to the tailback, Hawkins, and he has met in the backfield, never made it back to the 25-yard line where the ball had been. Sean Skates did a good job as well as Van Smith closing to make the tackle. It'll be third and a short five, a long four, with 2.07 to go in the first quarter. The Class AA State Championship game. Sweetwater's taking the early advantage after the turnover. Swings out in the flat. Actually, it was a lateral pitch to Hawkins, trying to turn the corner, but uh, a great angle of pursuit that time by the Bulldog defender. Number 32. Hakeem Hawkins is the ball carrier. Correction, 42. Right now, but number 82, Dwayne Lee. Well, maybe it was 82. Uh, 82 <laughs> or 42. I Dwayne Lee or Dwayne Jimmy McCary uh, had a good angle of pursuit there and pulled down Hawkins before he could turn the corner. It's going to be fourth and Bonds two. And once again, Upton. Upton will be deep to punt and Bonds back to receive. You got a good idea of the speed of the Milan defense, as you pointed out, to, to get to the corner and make the play. Bonds fields it on the hop at the 38. Got by the first wave, but couldn't get by the second, as there was Her Harry Irvin Bonds to grab him around the ankles, along with number 51, David Woodruff. So after the pickup of about five on the return. 35 yard punt for Upton and Milan is in business. Good field position once again at the 43 yard line of the Wildcats. On the 58 seconds to go in the first quarter. On the exchange of punts, Milan does pick up about five yards so their defense did do the job and got the ball back in good position. Back again in the three man eye and the give us to the middle man, Williamson, right up the middle. He found good room in the middle as the front man and the tailback both went to the right and Andre Stewart, like I said, Williamson, Andre Stewart carried it right up the middle and uh, got enough for a first down for Milan. Jerry Parker on the tackle and, and uh, Coach Stoops was very complimentary of Jeremy Parker. He said he's worked and made himself into a college prospect. That was the first first down that Milan has gotten in the football game as defenses have really uh, ruled the day. Quarterback still has the ball, rolls out to the right, pass is almost picked off again. Doing a good job to get out in the coverage. There was number 75, Chris Francis. He got up and batted that one down as Bolton rolled to the right, looking for a receiver downfield. Could have been Stewart that he was looking for. It was a good job by Chris Francis. I really didn't see who he was throwing the ball to, but Chris did a good job getting back in coverage and, and using all of his six feet and knocked that ball down. So it'll be second down and 10 with 17 seconds to go in the first quarter. Could be the last play of the quarter. Uh, the Bulldogs have the wind in their face. The wind is swirling on the floor of Dudley Field. Give us to Stewart up the middle again, and he found good yardage once again as the fullback and tailback uh, had gone to the left, and Stewart went back up the middle, slant, slanting off to the right. And that will be the last play of the first quarter with the score, Sweetwater 7, Milan nothing. Third and five, big play here for Milan. Throw it out in the flat, intending it for Bonds, and over there on the coverage was Harry Irvin, and uh, that play was a little bit out of sync from the beginning, and so it'll be fourth and five. Coach, uh, what have you seen in the first quarter that uh, we might pick up on to watch for as we begin the second quarter of play? Well, we told you to expect the unexpected, and so far neither coach has disappointed us. 
And we saw Milan come out in a trips formation, run a little 4-3 defense and passing situation. Uh, they've had some success with the quick traps offensively. Sweetwater has come out in the split backs. They ran a reverse on the kickoff, so some interesting things happening. Uh, defense is playing such a big part in this game that the big one big play may make the difference. Upton has broken it on the punt return. He caught it at the 10. I thought he waved fair catch, and there is a penalty flag down way back at the 12-yard line, but he returned it all the way down to the 30-yard line. And let's let the officials sort this one out with 11.40 to go in the first half and, and uh, see what the call is on that uh, most unusual Bonds punt and long Upton return. Well, it's going to be a big play one way or the other. It's going to be a big play for Sweetwater if the play stands. And, of course, Milan uh, will love to see this thing come back. 49 yards on the punt. In the first quarter unofficially, we have Milan with 32 yards of offense. Sweetwater with 23. So the defenses have definitely come out ready to go here in the first half. Have an invalid fair catch signal. Five yards from the play. First down. In the first quarter, we had six punts between the two teams. So that penalty cost... Uh, not only about 50 or 60 yards on the football field, but also a, a lot of momentum that Sweetwater would have had uh, knocking on the door once again. They put it in play first and 10 from their own seven yard line, and you gotta be careful here because a bobble, an intercepted pass, uh, and Milan's in business. And the ball is loose in the end zone, and it looks like Milan has recovered it. There's a flag down on the play. Forward motion was stopped at the one yard line and let's see what the penalty's all about. Preliminary indication illegal shift once again. If that's the case, Steve. I, I believe Milan's going to decline the penalty and take the play. They, Defense got some good penetration, and, and uh, Sweetwater is right there on the goal line. Got him back up about as far as you can go. The illegal shift on the offense is fine. Second down. With the decline in the penalty, that becomes the second sack for Sweetwater here in the first half. I'm now, sorry, for Milan, excuse me. Standing in his own end zone is Upton. He gives to the first back through, number 25, Irvin. And he was stopped right at the line of scrimmage. To be honest, did a good job to get out of the end zone there and avoid the safety. You're absolutely right. Dwayne Lee hit him before he crossed the goal line and just his own momentum carried him out. The ball is 25, Jerome Irvin. Brought down by number 14, Scott Willow. Third and about 16 now from the one-yard line for Sweetwater. Give us to the fullback again, Irvin, off the right side, and nothing doing once again. Tim Perry was there first, I believe. You know, Sweetwater leads the game 7 or nothing, but I don't believe they have a first down here in the first half. Well, besides the touchdown play, uh, they haven't had a play where they could, uh, could count for a first down. And now Upton's going to have to kick uh, from his own end zone, Jamie Upton, the punter. This puts a little extra pressure on the uh, snapper as well, and the rest of those guys on the front wall who are protecting the punter. Well, I tell you, from the games we saw Milan play, they have a good punt rush. Upton got it out of there, and Bonds fields it on the run at the 27-yard line, spins inside to the 20, and Milan's in great shape now. First and 10 from the 20 after the 26-yard punt and the seven-yard return. 10-12 to go in the first half of action. Milan has it first and 10 from the Sweetwater 20.
Bolton gives it to Bonds. He's got room on the right side, cuts it back. Good running in traffic all the way down to the five-yard line and maybe just a little bit beyond as he just got in there amidst the big boys and kept those legs churning and made it all the way down to the four-yard line, a pickup of 16 on the play, and a first and goal for Milan with 9.50 to go in the first half. Did an excellent job following his block and his offensive line did an excellent job opening the hole at the point of attack. Then they continued downfield. You saw Brian Richardson and Gary Johnson both downfield throwing blocks, and they let him get a big gain on that play. And this uh, eye bone look has been most effective for Milan with Deshaun Skates and Andre Stewart uh, both leading the way on blocks and getting good yardage. Bond slams it in there to about the three-yard line, a pickup of one on the play. It'll be second and goal from the three-yard line. Well, the interior line of Sweetwater kind of stiffened there a little bit. You saw Jerome Irvin and, and David Woodruff in there along with the rest of the defensive line. Ball is on the hash mark to the right side of the field. Two tight ends in the game. Give us to Bonds again off the right side, and Bonds powers it into the end zone for the touchdown, Milan Bulldogs. With 8.53 to go, Bonds crossed the line with a little bit of second effort after he was hit and scored for the Bulldogs to make it 7-6 Sweetwater, and now they'll line up for the extra point. Could be Robinson on to attempt the extra point out of the hold of number 15, John Lavorn. Kirk Moore should be the snapper. The hold is down, the kick is blocked. The kick is blocked by Sweetwater. Might have been Harry Irvin the first one through there. Number 20, Heath Hawkins to make the block. So the Sweetwater defense holds and keeps them from getting the extra point, and they still lead 7-6 to six with 8.53 to go in the half. Scoring drive, three plays, 20 yards. James Bonds goes in from three yards out. James now has six carries, 30 yards rushing, and Milan does the same thing Sweetwater does. They take advantage of the short field and get on the board. Bonds kicks it to Neal, who goes all the way back to the three-yard line, stops just short of the goal line after gaining his momentum and brings it out to the 25-yard line where he's tackled by a host of Bulldog defenders. May have crossed the 25 to the 26, and Sweetwater will put it in play there. On the extra point, Heath Hawkins blocked the extra point. He had three blocks of kicks during the year, so uh, kind of got a nag for that. Much too early to tell, but it could turn out to be a big play in this football game. Jeffrey Upton is the quarterback. Upton keeps it off the right side, trying to turn the corner and can't. May have even lost a half a yard. No, he got back to the line of scrimmage. The ball is spotted just outside the 25-yard line. Dwayne Lee was the first Bulldog there, and then Brad Davis closed quickly. I tell you, that's a tough play because Jeffrey Upton is, is quick, and uh, it gives you an idea of how quick and fast uh, this and talented this Milan defense is. Sweetwater had Pokey Sharp in the game at running back that time, and he's still in there, lined up directly behind the quarterback as Neal comes in motion. Upton looking now and cannot even get his feet set up as Marcus Spinks knifed through there, almost untouched and uh, wrestled Upton to the ground before he could ever get started, all the way back at the 18-yard line. Spinks had a great year this year, registered right around 100 hits this year for the Bulldogs. Third and very long, and Sweetwater wants to call timeout and talk about it. With that last sack, our crack statistician crew tells us that was the fourth for minus 29 yards. The Milan defense is definitely as good as advertised. Third and long, and the, as he went back to set up for the pass, Upton bobbled it and never could really get his feet back as the defense was all over him. Among others, number 42, Jimmy McCary was in there for the Bulldogs. And so it'll be fourth and about 20 
Once again, they'll have to punt from the shadow of their own goalpost. And another, another three and out for Sweetwater. Bonds goes back this time with Stewart. They've been going back in a single back set, but now they are uh, back there split. Upton gets it away quickly, a low kick that takes a roll, and Bonds takes it at the 44-yard line. Good open field tackle that That's time for Sweetwater by number 20, Heath Hawkins, and he's uh, really shown on special teams so far. And Milan is doing just what they wanted to do. They want to play defense and play field position with you, and right now they're winning the battle of field position. They found some success running out of that eye bone as well, or the three uh, back eye formation look, and they're going to stick with it. That's one thing about uh, coaches like Tucker and Dupes. They find something successful, they'll stay with it and uh, get all that they can out of it. Bonds bounces it outside. He's got room on the corner. Can't quite get to the corner as Upton did not allow him to turn, although he got about 13 yards on the carry down to the 36, excuse me, 26 yard lines before Jeffrey Upton pushed him out of bounds. Harry Irving closed quick to help out on the tackle. First and 10 for Milan with 6.11 to go in the first half, looking to get it close enough where they can punch one in and take the lead. They trail 7 to 6. Give us to Stewart up the middle. He's got room to the 20 down to the 19 and maybe even the 18 yard line. They've been very successful with Stewart tonight. I, I don't know if it's that the defense is keen on Bonds, which you can obviously understand them doing that, but uh, Stewart, when he's got the ball up the middle, has had two or three big gains. Unofficially, five carries, 27 yards, so that's an excellent average against a very tough Sweetwater defense, uh, especially the six-man front that they're employing. They've got ten men within two yards of the line of scrimmage there. Bonds rounds the right side and gets it down to the 15 enough for a first down for Milan I believe that is the indication Jamie Upton and Richie Jenkins close in to make the tackle but again after the first down have been obtained the clock is running with five minutes and 15 seconds to go what coach Tucker would like to do is to take about five minutes to go this last 15 yards and score on the last play of the half. Bond slams in there to about the 12 yard line, might have gotten to the 11. They put it down just inside the 12, pick up a four on the play, it'll be second down and six. Bolton gives it to Stewart. Stewart finds a little seam up the middle, and that hole closed quickly as he went from the 11 down to about the eight yard line to pick up a three, and it'll be third and three. I thought we were gonna see a situation there where Andre Stewart was gonna get loose uh, for a bigger gain than that, but Larry Arwood, as you pointed out, just closed the hole and, and uh, really stopped the forward momentum in its tracks, and Andre uh, was stopped still a little bit short. Probably in uh, four down territory here. So they've got two plays to make three yards. They go off the left side. What a hit that time by number 14, Parker. Bond seemed to have a little head of steam going. And Parker got down underneath his pads and really rocked him after a gain of one. And so it'll be fourth and two. Oh, it was an excellent play. I was like you. I thought he had it made. He had a nice kick out block on the end. And here comes Jeremy Parker. Uh, stops him in his tracks. With fourth and two, 3.43 to go in the half, Milan calls timeout to talk about it. After some admonitions from Coach Tucker, the Bulldogs come back out fourth and two, lining up as if to go for it, still in that straight eye formation. Give us the Stewart up the middle, and I don't know about it. I don't believe he made the five-yard line, which is where he had to get in order to have the first down. It looks like Sweetwater's going to take over on downs here. A huge play in this football game. The Sweetwater defense has been on the field most of this first half, and they've been on the field in situations where they were being ready to be scored on, and that can be very tiring on a defense. And so 
to hold them here and hopefully be able to run out the clock. That's a big break for Sweetwater. Well, it's got to be a big lift for the Wildcats, but of course, if you're Milan, uh, you can't be too upset about the situation, the way their defense has really dominated the game with the exception of the, of the score after the turnover. And uh, Sweetwater still has a long way to go and uh, uh, three plus minutes before the end of the half. Absolutely nothing for Arwood. He struggles for about a yard from the six to the seven. Well, you're talking about Sweetwater and, and the fact they've already scored seven points. They've done something that nine other teams couldn't do against uh, Milan here in the first half. Milan had nine shutouts. Uh, average giving up less than three points per game. So that gives you an idea of the kind of season this defense has had. Only 34 points allowed in 12 games. Just absolutely incredible, especially in, in this day and age of wide open football. Second and long for Sweetwater. Upton gives to Arwood. Arwood finds good yardage right up the middle on a little quick opener, maybe a trap in the line. And uh, they got out to the 14-yard line. That's about two yards shy of the first down. They've got to get to the 16 for the first, and so it'll be third and two. Well, obviously a big play here for Sweetwater to get a first down, keep the ball away from Milan these last uh, two minutes of the first half. Also to build some confidence going into the second half. Harwood and Tyson Neal now are the backs behind Upton. Upton gives to Arwood, looking for something off the right side. Got to the 15 and maybe just a bit beyond, but he needed to get just a bit beyond the 16. I think he's going to be about two feet short of the first down. There's a uh, call for a stoppage of play as Milan calls a timeout with 1.53 to go in the first half. The third down stop was by... Lee. Upton gets the snap and the punt away. Bonds is going to field it over his shoulder back at the 47-yard line, and he slips down actually at the 48. Still good field position, but uh, perhaps the wet turf. It rained most of the day yesterday, or most of the night last night. It's been a beautiful, beautiful day today, and at game time, with uh, windy conditions of about 15 miles per hour. It was about 45 degrees with the temperature dropping. That punt was good for 32 yards. Their sixth punt of the day. I'll tell you something Miles doing a good job of. They're coming up and fielding the punt. Uh, although he didn't get any yards that time, he did stop the potential of a big roll. Reverse to Robinson, wanted to throw it. Now he wings it downfield and coming back to receive that ball. Intercepted, intercepted by Upton. Looking for someone to lateral it to and can't. Several good plays that time. First of all, by the Sweetwater defense uh, penetrating through there with number 75, Chris Francis. Then on the reverse pass, Robinson looked downfield to throw it to number 17, Cowan. He made a good break on the ball, but then Upton just wrestled it away from him, Jamie Upton. And after all that, there's a flag on the play. Blocking ball away. Then the run. First down. So the interception by Upton, his second of the game, will stand. And uh, But that's going to hurt the field position. They had decent field position out to about the 32-yard line. And now the ball is backed up to the 18-yard line, where it'll be first and 10 for Sweetwater with 1.17 to go. Well, you pointed out, I think the key to the play is that Jamie Upton came back and took the ball away from the receiver. It was actually going to be a completion, and he just made a great play. And, and although they got the penalty and it puts them back, the key was to stop Milan's offensive possession, and then they did accomplish that. Good run that time by Tyson Neal off the left side. He got about nine yards on the play out to the 26, 27 yard line. It'll be second and one with 48 seconds to go. Sweetwater does have two timeouts, but uh, they don't seem to be in a big hurry to get the playoff here. It's been a very strange first half because as much as Milan has dominated on defense, they still trail, and that's what Sweetwater has on their fa in their favor uh, as they go into halftime if they can maintain this lead in the next 30 seconds. Uh, they got to feel good about that. Parker and Jamie Upton are out to the right, and Jeffrey gives it to Tyson Neal again, finds room again. 
and he gets across the 35-yard line to the 37-yard line, and that's enough to stop the clock for the moving of the chains and another first down for Sweetwater. Actually, that's only their second first down of the, of the game unofficially. With 16 seconds to go, the clock is wound. They may let it run out. If not, it'll be the last play of the first half, without a doubt, as they're four seconds, three seconds, two, one. That's the end of the first half. With the score, Sweetwater seven, and Milan six in the Class AA State Championship game. Makes a good play out there at the 22-yard line. And so uh, they take off, take over there at uh, first and 10 from the 22-yard line. Milan will have the first possession of the second half. I'll tell you what, Jeremy Parker has made some awful big plays in this football game. Of course, the touchdown catch, and a couple times defensively, he's just done a good job of getting to the right place and hanging on. Let's go down to the field and listen to the Milan cheerleaders. Bolton pitches back to Bonds on the right side. They're in the eye bone, and coming up to make the hit that time was Irvin. Number 25, Jerome Irvin, really put a lick on Bonds after the pickup of two to the 24. Really just about one, to be honest, a long one. Kind of starting up, up where we left off with a good defensive play here in the second half. They stay with that eye bone look. The three backs lined one behind the other. Give us up the middle to Stewart as the fullback and tailback came out to the left here. They went up the middle with Stewart, and he got from the 23 to the 25, a pickup of two. It'll be third and about seven. Just underway in the second half of action here in the 1993 Class AA Clinic Bowl, the state championship game. And one of these two is going to be crowned the state champion. So far, just a, a blocked extra point separates them in terms of the score. Bolton drops back to pass. The pressure is on, and he is sacked, but a flag comes out as he was sacked all the way back at the 14-yard line. Could have been a face mask. I believe that's what you're going to see. Davey Efton did a great job of getting back and putting the pressure on. Unfortunately, just barely caught some of his face mask. Base mask, defense, 15 yards, third down. Well, instead of a fourth and 18 or 20, they're going to have a third and about three. The ball's at the 29-yard line. They've got to get nearly to the 32. 10-15 to go in the third quarter. They run it right to Bonds, and he works his way forward. Didn't look like much was there at first, but he just kept working and uh, may have gotten enough for the first down. Probably going to have to measure it here. Be a short trip from the far sidelines. The chains will be brought in for the measurements. Well, I'm going to go on the line here and say it's a little bit short, and I'm kind of like you. I didn't think there was any room there at all, but the offensive line surge and Bonds coming through, I was able to get it close. Looks like about six inches short. Great eyes, Bill. Looks like you could uh, count it from here. <laughs> so probably Milan will bring on the punting unit. Well, that's an excellent job by the Milan defense there to overcome the penalty because, as you pointed out, they look like they had Milan stopped, and, and Sweetwater comes up and, and still does it on third down. More snaps, and Bonds is back to punt. Upton is deep to receive for Sweetwater. Jeffrey Upton. A lot of pressure that time 
from every angle, and Bond's punt is short and takes a sideways bounce and goes out of bounds just right at the midfield stripe. And so Sweetwater will take it over in good field position as their defense really was stingy on that particular uh, series of downs. And the short 19-yard punt with no return put Sweetwater in great shape here to begin their first possession of the second half. Well, Harry Urban almost got that punt right up the middle. They come out in their eye formation. It's going to be R. Wood and Neal in the backfield. Give us to Neal. Nothing doing. Penetrating through there that time was number 42, McCary. And although he did not make uh, the stop, he did slow that thing down enough where that the rest of the defense could catch up to Neal. And they lost about four on the play. Back to the 40. Six-yard line. Jimmy McCary and Tim Perry, as you pointed out, did make the tackle after being slowed in the backfield. Now they're in a little bit tighter formation, almost a wing T look. Neal goes in motion to the wide side of the field. Upton rolling back, pressure from the backside, throws it down the field to Parker, and he just dropped the ball. Well, not much you can say about that. A very well-executed play. The uh, And Parker just didn't catch it. They had flooded the zone, the uh, right side of the field, with three receivers. Two others were downfield a little bit deeper, and Parker came across underneath and was absolutely all alone, but uh, just couldn't hang on to that one. So it'll be third down and 14. Ball's on the 46-yard line with 8.49 to go in the third quarter. And not the down and distance you want if you're going up against this Milan defense. Quick hit, quick hitch is fake to the left side of the field and throwing long and over the head of Jamie Upton is uh, Jeffrey Upton. No one had a chance at that one, and that's probably a pretty good play by Jeffrey. Uh, they'll still have good field position here, be backing Milan up deep in all likelihood if they get any kind of decent punt at all and uh, Upton didn't want to risk the turnover on that pass by forcing it into double coverage. Well, good coverage. Jeffrey Upton, of course, pumped one way, uh, pumped to the right, and then went back to the left, but That's Brad Davis and James Bonds yeah, had none of that and had good coverage downfield. Low punt that takes a high skip over the head of Bonds, rolls to the five. The coverage team is there. Parker downs it at the two. They got it at the one-yard line. Parker was the first man there, and I believe Heath Hawkins. We've mentioned him on special teams a couple of times. Good coverage there also by number 82, Richie Jenkins, and uh, just several Wildcats hustling down the field to cover that one. Well, you talked earlier about the good job that Milan had been doing about fielding the punch and keeping that type play from happening, and uh, James Bonds wanted to field that ball, but it just took a, a big hop over his head, and he had no choice but to let it go. And, and heads up play by Jeremy Parker and the punt saying for Sweetwater. It wasn't spectacular. The, the roll time uh, uh, really good. exceeded the hang time, but it was effective, 53 yards. Bolton just inches it out there from the one to the two, and he's stacked up in the middle of the line. It'll be second down and nine. Well, in a game like this where your defenses are dominating, a uh, field position and a, and a play like that are so big. Uh, this could establish potentially Sweetwater getting the ball back on their side of the 50. So uh, uh, just a great bit of luck, if nothing else, for the Sweetwater punt team. And, and as you pointed out, it rolled an awful long way, but that's very effective. Great hustle, though, by the coverage men. Uh, otherwise, that makes it to the end zone. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't really even gain a yard. Uh, the ball's still on the one-yard stripe, so it'll be second and ten. And the give is to Stewart up the middle, and he is able to get forward to about the three from the one to the three, a pickup of two, and it'll be third and eight with uh, their backs up against the wall here now. The Milan Bulldogs are uh, maybe sending in the punt team on third down. Yes, Bonds has gone back to punt, and Kirk Moore has come on to snap it deep. One more man racing onto the field for Milan. He gets there in time. And so on third and eight, Coach Tucker is going to uh, uh, go ahead and punt it away and not risk a turnover this deep. Good snap. Bonds gets a punt that goes off the side of his foot. 
takes a sideways roll and a great field position for Sweetwater. They've gained about 12 or 15 yards on the, well, 20 yards on the exchange of punts there as the ball goes out of bounds at the 28-yard line as we first and 10 with 6.50 to go in the third quarter for the Wildcats. Last time that Sweetwater had a short field, they were effective and, uh, and took, took it in for a score. From the very same spot on the field, the 28-yard line, they threw a pass to Parker, and he looks like he's got single coverage over here this time. One of the things that's helped Sweetwater out here in the, in the first two possessions for Milan, they've punted the ball 19 yards and 25 yards, so uh, Sweetwater's definitely taking advantage of that. Neal ran it up the middle, absolutely nothing as Deshaun Skates got down there low and just stopped him cold. Lost about a half a yard actually, but he was able to just barely get it back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 10. Looking ahead a little bit, and, and I guess you can do this since you've seen Milan's defense play. Uh, assuming they don't give any more yards, Sweetwater's about at the maximum of their field goal range. Uh, Gary Golden, they feel comfortable from about 45 yards in. So. Uh, if they were stopped right here, two more plays, they might try the field goal. Pass out in the flat, intended for Parker, incomplete. And uh, might have been a little bit of miscommunication that time between quarterback and receiver. Parker turned in, it looks like Upton threw an out on the uh, quick route, and uh, pass fell incomplete. It'll be third and 10 with 6.11 to go. And I think Sweetwater's going to call a timeout here and talk about it. Third and long here as Sweetwater uh, prepares to go for it. Third and 10 from their own, or rather from the Milan 28-yard line. And this Milan defense continues to be tough. They're in that 4-3 defense in the passing situation. Two receivers are over here to the right side with split backs. Good protection up front. Breaking down a little bit. And just as you said good protection, Tim Perry fought off the block. He was able to wrestle up to the ground all the way back at the 38-yard line, a loss of about 10 on the play. And so it'll be fourth and 20. Well, let's give the coverage a little bit of credit there because I felt like the protection was good enough uh, for Jeffrey up to get the pass off, but it did break down and, and uh, did take the sack. Actually lost nine on the play as the ball is spotted at the 37. And so back to punt is Jamie Upton. Deep to receive is Bonds. And so far, that excellent... Uh, punt that was down on the one has not come to fruition for Sweetwater. Bonds calls for and makes the fair catch at the 14-yard line where Milan will take over first and 10. Kickers are getting a workout tonight. That was the eighth punt for Sweetwater in this football game. That was good for 23 yards, but it was effective in that uh, there was no return, and they're still pinned deep. What a great penetration that time. Knifing through there was Irvin, Jerome Irvin, from his defensive line position to make the tackle on the running back for Milan. Bonds carried it and lost back to the 12 yard line. Well, I have to be honest with you, we, we watched both these teams on film and we knew the defenses were great, but I, I had no idea that the defenses would dominate a, the football game as they have tonight. It's just been, uh, it's been unbelievable. They have been totally stifling for the offenses. There went Bonds off the right side again and he was stifled once again, to use your word, Bill. Uh, I saw Irvin in there, and I also saw number 63, I believe it was. For Sweetwater, Wilson. It's a big third down play, but it's not a position on the field where you want to take a big chance with a, a reverse or, or some kind of trick play. Still third and 11, and Bol Bolton rolls right, looking downfield. The pass is incomplete. Robinson caught it, but he was out of bounds when he came down. 
His momentum carried him out of bounds. So with the incomplete pass, 408 to go in the third quarter, Sweetwater looks like we'll get it back in good field position once again as Milan will be forced to punt. Good coverage by Jamie Upton. Had it all the way to the sideline and, and really forced the pass to be thrown with on a little bit. And, and, and that's why it was not complete. It was out of bounds. punter in there and there's a penalty flag down as number 55 JT McKinney booted it away and the pressure came in and he uh, was knocked down the punt was fair caught out at the 39 yard line but let's just wait and see I believe it's going to be a roughing the kicker penalty Roughing the kicker. Defense, 15 yards, first down. And so Milan gets a break in the kicking game here. Uh, as the kicker was rough there, they changed punters as Bonds had been a little bit ineffective the last couple of punts. And McKinney at least maybe brought him some good luck there as he got the punt away, a decent punt, but he was roughed on the play. And they take over again at first and 10 with 4.01 to go. And there's the reverse to Robinson. He fumbles the ball, and Sweetwater's got it at the 25-yard line. Coming up with that loose ball was number 70 for Sweetwater, John Campbell, the linebacker. And he was Johnny on the spot. He had played the play pretty well, trying to pursue it from the inside out. And uh, somehow Robinson just never got the handle on that one good and, and dropped it, and uh, Campbell fell on it. And so Sweetwater's back in business. Turnovers tonight have hurt Milan. That's their third, the two pass interceptions, and now the fumble. And again, uh, Sweetwater's in a situation where they've got a 26-yard field. Upton looking long. There's Parker breaking on the ball. Is uh, the defensive back who was back there, number 25, in good shape was Ray Warren. Correction, Maurice Ivory. Excellent protection up front. Jeffrey up and had time and really threw that ball a little more toward the center of the field than he wanted to. I think if he'd thrown that ball to the corner, he had a chance for a second touchdown pass of the evening. Very similar to the first touchdown pass Very that much was, so. was caught by Parker. Ivory was there on the defense and really had uh, a great shot at intercepting that uh, ball. Upton is only one for six for 28 yards on the night, and we thought that his passing might be a key for Sweetwater, and so far it, it has been in terms of Sweetwater's ineffectiveness. Now he passes it in the flat to his brother Jamie, and Jamie takes it down inside the 15 to the 13, and that's enough for a Sweetwater first down, a pickup of 12 on the play. Well, I want to give some of the credit for that ineffectiveness to the mile in front. Uh, Jeffrey Upton has had, a, has had much time to throw the ball. And these last two times, he's had a chance to settle in the pocket, look over the field, and really had two good looks at his receivers, and uh, this time he does connect. But uh, the offensive line, really the last two plays, has given him the time he needs to make those kind of throws. Three backs, no correction, two backs in the backfield who are split, set to the right. The give is to, no, the fake is to Arwood. Upton still has the ball, looking for a block on the corner from Parker. Got a little bit of a block, but coming up quickly to help out was Maurice Ivory and also number 82, Dwayne Lee, the linebacker, coming over to make the stop after a pickup of about four on the play. Down to the nine-yard line. It'll be second down and six. And, and that's what a completed pass or two will do for you. It'll, it'll open up some other things, and, and we've been waiting for Jeffrey Upton to, to run the ball. Uh, he has been a very effective runner this year for Sweetwater, and there you saw, uh, got a good idea of what he can do. One thing we have not seen from him is the quarterback draw, and that is in their repertoire. He had a very long run earlier in the year on a quarterback draw, and uh, there's the quick run just right up the middle, the quarterback sneak. Got about three, maybe four yards on the play from the nine down close to the five. They're putting it on the six-yard line, correction. Pick up a three on the play. It'll be third and three from the six. Well, obviously, if you're a mile in here, you want to get out without any points given up. But 
the most you want to give up here is a field goal. In that case, a touchdown still puts you ahead, and you're in good shape. A touchdown here would be uh, would be really tough on the Bulldogs. Heath Hawkins is in there behind the quarterback, and Arwood is set to the right in the backfield. Upton looking, and that pass was batted down. I think Elton Williamson got his hands up and batted that ball away as the quick pitch was going over there to Parker. And now on to attempt the field goal. It looks like Godin's going to come in, and he'll be trying about a 23-yarder from near the right hash mark. Uh, not a great angle, but uh, it could be just a little bit more severe. The holder will be Parker, and the snapper will be number 82 for the Wildcats, Richie Jenkins. Snap is down, the kick is up, and the field goal by Godin is good. And so with 1.39 to go in the third quarter, Godin boots his team out to a 10-6 advantage over Milan. The scoring drive was six plays. Sweetwater began the drive on the 26-yard line. It ends with a 23-yard Gary Godin field goal. Score is now 10-6, Sweetwater. Godin boots that one deep, and he goes about five yards deep in the end zone. The wind is very brisk behind his back, and he took full advantage of it and kicked that one over the head of the deep man, who was Dwayne Lee. So Milan will put it in play once again on their end of the field at the 20-yard line, first and 10 for the Bulldogs. I think Gary got pumped up. What do you think? Uh, he knocked the snot out of that football, and really that was a chance for Milan, possibly on, with a good kick return, to get some field position. And he's kept him from doing that, put him back on the 20-yard line. We talked about it a little bit uh, earlier. Milan has, has really dominated the stats and seems to have dominated the game, but Sweetwater's winning 10-6, to six, and that's the bottom line. Give inside on the little cross-buck action to Andre Stewart, and there was absolutely nothing there. Of course, we have a whole quarter to play, and, and Milan is not going to panic, but there's some things that they do out of their offense that might catch Sweetwater. They do throw the halfback pass. Uh, they will throw, uh, run the end around with Jimmy Robinson, and he can run the ball. We, we saw him try that a moment ago, but he can also throw off that play. So look for those kind of options uh, coming out of the Milan offense, particularly in the fourth quarter, because right now the wind is, is, appears to be right in their face. One minute to go in the third. Milan has it second and ten. Somehow, Bolton got that handoff up the middle to Bonds, and Bonds took it from the 20 to the 23. There wasn't much in there, but he was able to wedge it forward for a pickup of three on the play, third and seven. Well, Jerome Irvin shot right through the line and was in the backfield, and as you pointed out, uh, just a great job for Bolton to make the exchange because Jerome was there ready to take it himself. Milan calls for a timeout with 28 seconds to go in the third quarter, facing a third and seven. Third and seven, one back in the Milan backfield. The pass is great catch by Bonds, and he spun forward after being hit out there by Jamie Upton and got the ball right to the 30-yard line, and I believe if he got to the 30, it's a first down. Great one-handed grab by Bonds. Great catch, and as you pointed out, because they got the ball off the touchback, all he has to do is touch the 30. Should be a first down. And it is, first and 10 for Milan. Big, big play, and a big time catch by James Bonds. Well, I think what you see there is Milan's been waiting to get some field position before they did some different things, and, and it's getting so late in the game. I, I, they feel like they've got to do some of that stuff now, and I, I agree with them. Uh, they've got to get some offense going and, and keep their defense off the field as much as possible. That's the first completion in six attempts for Milan for a pickup of seven yards and a first down on the play. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score Sweetwater 10 and Milan 6. As we begin the fourth quarter, what's some things we can look for or reflect upon uh, uh, facing the final 12 minutes of action here in Class AA? Bolton wings it out intended for Bonds, I guess. 
No, intended out there for number 28 for Milan. And that's Jeff Massey. And good job by Bolton actually getting rid of that football there. What can we look for in this fourth quarter? Well, right there is just a good example that neither team has been able to solve the other's defense. Uh, Sweetwater has been able to take advantage of their field position and their opportunities. The big uh, three turnovers there by Milan. Uh, credit a little bit better pass protection uh, from Sweetwater. Uh, the linebacker and the defensive line plays have just been excellent for both teams. Flare pass out here, a little bit of a screen look to Andre Stewart, and he had to get to the 40-yard line and did not. He was stopped at about the 37 or 38. Can't really tell exactly. It's going to be about third and two. Unofficially, in the third quarter, we have Milan with three yards in the quarter and Sweetwater with seven to give you an idea of how much the defenses have dominated here in the second half. Two good plays by Bolton. One, as you pointed out, to get rid of the ball and avoid the sack in there and uh, just getting the ball over the defensive ends, uh, outstretched arms and completing the pass, getting close to the first down anyway. And good reaction by the Sweetwater defense as well to keep uh, Stewart short of the first down. There goes Bonds over the right side, and he got across the 40 to the 42. Pick up about four on the play, and that's enough for the first down for Milan. Well, of course, the clock stops with the moving of the chains, and then it will start uh, as soon as they get those chains set. And it's not really an urgent factor at this point, but with uh, Milan trailing by four, it could become a factor in the football game. Well, James Bonds did a good job that time getting behind Gary Johnson and getting the yards that he needed to get the first down. Gary Johnson is listed uh, at uh, 199 pounds, uh, as are all the Milan offensive linemen. And uh, it's a surprising, I guess, that, uh, that uh, they can't grow them any bigger than 199 pounds, according to Coach John Tucker. We were pretty much amazed when we saw this film on team. We expected to see a small football team, and, and it is not, as you can see. Well, Coach Tucker told me that, uh, that he really didn't know how much the boys weighed, that they... Uh, uh, the school board had to sell their scales in order to uh, balance the budget, so uh, so he just didn't know. And of course, uh, Coach Tucker is uh, uh, noted for his witty sayings, and uh, certainly that's one of the wittiest that I've heard in a while, because there's definitely some big boys in that offensive line. Bonds takes it up on second and eight across the 45-yard line to the 46, I believe, and uh, gained about one, maybe two on the play. It'll be third and six from the 46. Tackle by the Irvins. Harry and Jerome team together to make that stop. And that's really some good uh, family work in there as those twin brothers uh, met at the ball carrier. The wind blew the ball a little bit. Now the official stops the clock and they're gonna run in here and uh, uh, make sure they've got it set correctly. Nine twenty-two and counting to go in the football game for the Class AA State Championship for 1993. Give us to the third man. That's Bonds. He's looking for something off the right side, but couldn't find much. He got out to about the 48-yard line, and that is all, a pickup of two. So it'll be fourth down and approximately four yards to go. Another big play by the defensive ends from Sweetwater. Chris Francis got outside and turned the play in and, and got some pursuit to stop Bonds short of the first down. Bonds has unofficially carried 18 times for 63 yards in the football game, so JT McKinney is back to punt. Moore is the snapper and back to receive the punt with the wind at his back. McKinney will be booting to Upton, Jeffrey Upton. McKinney's punt is away. Upton waves for the fair catch, doesn't make it. Might have been touched. And if it was, then Milan will have it. at the 17-yard line by Milan, and that's where Sweetwater will put it in play first and 10 with 8 minutes and 20 seconds. And if you're Sweetwater right now and Coach Bill Dupes, 
you want to get a little something sustained to eat up some of this clock and give Milan less time to score uh, in a, a possession that surely will follow this possession, however long it takes. You also want to try to get field position back. Uh, Sweetwater, uh, Milan with the drives they had and the, and the punt has been able now to pack, back Sweetwater up going into the win, and if they could stop them here three and out, uh, they're going to get the ball back in good field position. The give was to Hawkins off the left side, and he went from the 17 to the 18, the pickup of one on the play, second down and nine, and, and uh, how many times have we said pickup of one, no gain, pickup of two? Uh, these defenses have just really smothered the offense. Give us to the tailback, and man, was he ever hit, and there's a flag on the play. Tim Perry came in to blast him. Hawkins, as he went up the middle, and uh, the flag was thrown about the point of contact. Could have been a, a tackling foul, or it could have been uh, on the offensive unit holding. That's the preliminary indication, illegal use of hands. And what do you do here? Do you take the penalty, or do you decline it and take the down? Uh -huh. The way their defense is, is, is uh, playing, you'd be tempted to take the play. Looks like he gained maybe another one out to near the 19. Let's just see what they've decided. Illegal use of hand on the offense. It's declined. Third down. Well, that's exactly what they did was decline the penalty, and so uh, they take the, the down instead. And they also save, what, 30 seconds, 45 seconds off the clock. Passes out to Jamie Upton from Jeffrey, and he got very near the first down, but I, I believe he's short. Now, the sticks are all the way on the other side of the field, and earlier in the game, Bill, you got one right uh, in predicting uh, how close he came. What do you think here? A little bit short. He has to get past the 32, and he's just short of the 32-yard line. Jeffrey threw to Jamie and a good, sure, open field tackle over there by the Milan defense, and so uh, Sweetwater will have to punt it and uh, they don't look to be in any real hurry. They want as much of this clock to tick off as they can. One thing you want to do here now, if you're miling, is definitely stay on side. Fourth and just about the length of a football. Upton gets the punt away. It's a high one. It's going to be covered well. Gets uh, somewhat of a Sweetwater bounce. It really skipped almost sideways and uh, is downed at the 48-yard line with six minutes and 16 seconds to go in the football game. Uh, the Sweetwater defense now is going to have to, to really uh, work hard to hold this Milan Bulldog team away from the end zone in order to try and preserve this victory down the stretch. The Sweetwater team is coached, of course, by Bill Duke, but he is assisted by Mickey Barong and Steve Barong, sons of the former coach of Sweetwater, a 72 championship team from Sweetwater, Bobby McKinnon and Rex Rhodes. Milan in the straight T formation. The give is off the right side on the crisscross to number 28. Carrying it there was the starting running back, Jeff Massey. He started the game and actually had the game's first carry, but since then has seen very little action and uh, had a good run off the right side there with the cross buck. Uh, a pickup of almost five on the play, so it'll be second and five. Well, Jeff's rushed for over 400 yards this season for the Bulldogs. He's one of the players that Coach Tucker told us had really improved and come on. Didn't really know what to expect out of the young sophomore, but he's come in and given him some good, uh, good play. This is Milan's best field position of the half. They began their previous possessions at the 22, the 1, the 14, the 20, and now the 48. So a great opportunity guy for Milan, and they need to take advantage of this here as we go under five and a half minutes. And they move it forward in the person of James Bonds down to the 40-yard line. That's a pickup of about seven or eight yards and enough for a first down with 5.15 to go. Coach John Tucker and his Milan staff, consisting of Tim Warren, Bill Bona, Donnie Joyner, and uh, Tim Jackson, have made some very good adjustments at halftime and have just displayed an outstanding defense the entire game. And now they've got a little bit of momentum the give a cross buck again, that time to Stewart. And there wasn't much there as they faked to Bonds up the middle, uh, faked also to Massey and gave it to Stewart going off the left side and staying home to 
knock him down just right at the 40-yard line uh, was the right side of the Sweetwater defensive line. Well, Davey Upton and Harry Urban both stayed at home. They didn't go. They didn't over pursue the play and made the tackle for no gain. There's Bonds, got some room, he breaks free. It's gonna be a foot race to the corner, and he cuts it back inside, being pursued from behind, and a good open field tackle, saving the touchdown by Jamie Upton. As Bonds got in the pile there and just kind of pushed, and then um, broke free from the pack, and went all the way down to the 11 yard line, where to be first and 10th with 4.21 to go for the Milan Bulldogs and they're knocking on the doors. A great spin move by James Bonds to get free, and, and how big that play by Jamie Upton's gonna be remains to be seen, but he did a great job in, in making the tackle by himself. Uh, Harry Irvin was hustling back to try to help out, but just a great open field tackle by Jamie Upton. There goes Bonds again. He went into the middle there and got two or three yards in traffic, and then he just stopped dead still in his tracks. I believe coming up to make the hit for Sweetwater was Chris Francis. There's a whistle and a timeout is being called by Sweetwater with three minutes and 56 seconds left to go in the football game. And they're clinging precariously to a four-point lead. One of the keys here is Miling still can get a first down and not score. That could be big. They'd have to get down to just outside the one-yard line for the first down. The ball's on the nine-yard line now. Great penetration that time. Knifing through from the right-hand side was Jerome Irvin, and we called his name many, many times as Bonds tried to take it off the left offensive line side and lost about four or five yards on that play. It'll be third down and 11. Well, Jerome's listed as 5'6", 189, but I tell you, he has come up big tonight, and that may have been the biggest play of the game, or very well could be. The ball is back at the 12-yard line. And here's the reverse, faked. Bolton still has it, pressure on him. He throws it downfield, incomplete. Intending it out there for, could have been Bonds. It was Bonds. And under heavy, heavy pressure that time, Bolton really has to be commended just for getting that pass away. It was a heads-up play because he knows if he throws the incomplete here and you come back and try again. The pressure was coming from uh, Nick Wilson uh, and also number 86, Davey Upton. Both were applying the pressure. Well, it's fourth and 11 now, and uh, this could be the season. Three receivers set to the right. Passes to Barnes and falls incomplete on fourth and 11. Bonds was looking for the blocking that had already begun to develop and uh, never really concentrated on the ball, and it fell to the turf, and so Sweetwater will take it over on downs with 3.09 to go. The good thing is that uh, there is still time if they can stop uh, Sweetwater here for Milan to score, or to at least get the football back and have a chance to score. They do have two timeouts remaining, uh, according to our information. Well, Sweetwater will have to get a first down in order to keep the ball away from Milan. Milan will get the ball back if they can get a three and out, at least with some time on the clock. And, and as we pointed out, first downs have been very difficult to come by in this game for either team. Obviously, if you're Sweetwater now, you want to secure the football. The worst thing that you want to do is run a couple of minutes off the clock, a minute and a half, and then punt the ball back. Well, they didn't even risk the handoff that time. Uh, Upton just faked and then rolled behind that man that he'd faked to and uh, picked up about one on the play. He's out at the 14-yard line. It'll be second down and nine. And from a Sweetwater perspective, the best thing about that is that the clock is running. Well, Milan, I think, is wisely saving their timeouts. I think if they stop them here, you'll see them use their second. Uh, the ball was marked at, at about 2.51, uh, so the, about two and a half, a little bit less than two and a half is when the ball will be snapped. Upton has it again, he loses one, then two tacklers, gets out to near the 20 yard line, he's tackled at the 19. Coming up there to make the hit for Milan was uh, number seven, that's Brad Davis, and also Shane Cowan was helping out. 
And Milan does take a timeout with 2.18 to go in the football game, trailing 10 to 6. The entire defensive team has gone across the way to the sidelines to discuss things with the coaching staff of the Bulldogs. Well, obviously the key now for Milan is to prevent the first down. Uh, third and three, if they can stop them and use their, their last timeout, uh, as we pointed out, they're going to get the ball back somewhere around the one minute, 45 seconds, somewhere in, in that area. So they are going to have at least one last shot. But the key is you got to stop them right here. Well, it'll be third and a long three. The ball is just outside the 19-yard line. they got to get almost to the 23-yard line. It's really close to four for the first down. If they make it to the 23, then they will have made it, as you pointed out. It's just short of the 23-yard line. Milan linebackers walking up. They're going to blitz into the holes. And absolutely nothing there as Jerome Irvin, who's had a big game defensively, could find no running room. And Milan takes another timeout with 2.10 to go in the football game. The tackle was made by Deshaun Skates. As he comes up and stops the, the penetration or stops the gain in the backfield with his penetration. Excellent management of the clock by the Milan defense, though. They're going to leave uh, a good solid two minutes for their offense to work with, and their offense should get the ball pretty decent field position. And, uh, and yet, really, <laughs> sometimes we've seen that even uh, 20 or 30 yards away from the goal line is not very good field position against these outstanding, tremendous defenses uh, that both of these teams have, uh, have shown all night long. Well, as we pointed out earlier in the game, Milan does get a lot of pressure on the punter, and they have that ability, and you may see him try here. Of course, the, the downside of trying that is you don't give yourself an opportunity for return one, and two, you risk penalty. Uh, but at this point in the game, and the, and the fact that Sweetwater's played so well defensively, you almost feel like they've got to go for a big play like that. You don't want to get offside, though. Offsides, uh, the five yards would be enough to give Sweetwater the first down. Uh, Upton is back to receive the snap. It's a good snap. The punt is away quickly. It's a low one that bounds, and Bonds takes it at the 47. Started left and comes back right, and uh, really could never get to the wall as the uh, Sweetwater coverers had, uh, had really stayed in their lanes very well, and there's an injured man down at about the 35-yard line for Sweetwater, and uh, their staff runs out to assist. That play took... Two, uh, 10 seconds off the clock. There are exactly two minutes to go in the football game, and Milan's in the eye bone from the 36-yard line. The fake is to all three. The swing pass is out there to number nine, Jimmy Robinson. Gets free from two, then three tacklers, and gets down inside the 30-yard line to the 29 before Irvin makes the tackle. That was Harry Irvin. We've called Jerome's name a lot, and Harry's as well. And uh, he pursued from all the way across the field to make the tackle from behind on Robinson. Sweetwater really made, played the, the particular play well. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't make the tackle on a good lot of effort on Jimmy Robinson's part. Great second effort by Robinson. First down is big here. There's no, he tried calling a timeout, and he has no timeouts. What I was fixing to say is, is what's key here for Milan is to get two yards, get the first down, because the clock will stop. We have a dead ball, illegal procedure on the offense, five yards. And Milan had no timeouts and called a timeout, and so the penalty is illegal procedure as the quarterback had come to the line and gotten set, and uh, so that's going to cost some precious time as the clock will start here with a minute, 20 seconds, and counting to go. And that's Milan's first penalty of the game. They play, played penalty-free to that point. Passes over the middle and picked off. What an interception. What an interception by John Campbell. John Campbell, the linebacker from Sweetwater, reached up and picked off with one hand the pass that was intended over the middle by the Milan quarterback, and what an interception by Campbell. Unbelievable. 
first of all, to be heads up and to, and to be to get your drop and be ready, but then the catch. Unbelievable. The clock is running. We're at the one minute mark. And all that Sweetwater has to do is snap it a couple of times and get that exchange between the quarterback and the center. And you can bet your bottom dollar that, uh, that they will not risk a handoff at this point. Well, he did, get, he did hand it off. I, I don't know. That's, I guess that's why I'm not coaching. But uh, they did give it off the right side. I believe that was Arwood that carried it. Could have been Hawkins. Well, when you get over 300 wins, we'll come ask you what to do. Thank you. I, in the meantime, I'll just <laughs> let them go. On the offense, not enough men on the line of scrimmage. Five yards, repeat. Well, there are 40 seconds to go, and I believe the clock will start when the ball is set, so they can run it down to about... Here is the line, second down. They can run it down to about 10 seconds to go in the football game before they have to snap it one more time. Steve, what a football game uh, defense. I don't, I don't know if I've ever seen a high school game dominated by defense on both sides, both teams. Uh, just phenomenal. The amazing thing is that, uh, that either team has been able to score. Let's take a minute now and, and congratulate both these teams while we have a few seconds. Uh, there are no losers in the clinic, though. I know that Sweetwater is going to win the football game, but Mylon's had a great year, and they're to be congratulated. Five seconds to go, and the clock is running, and the celebration has begun for Sweetwater, and the Mylon fans across the way are standing and cheering, but the Sweetwater fans are going wild as the players are celebrating all over the field and uh, Sweetwater has won the double-A state championship for 1993. The big danger here is that somebody doesn't get hurt for Sweetwater in the pile. There's helmets all over the field, the ice has been poured on the coaches, and and uh, just a great celebration taking place for the Wildcats. And tremendous sportsmanship de being displayed Absolutely. by a very disappointed Milan Bulldog team. But they've got nothing to be ashamed of, as you pointed out. They had a tremendous year and still only gave up 10 points today, but it wasn't quite enough. Well, I, I think that what you mentioned was the sportsmanship and the class of both football programs. Uh, we had a chance to visit with both coaches on Monday, and, and they both... Uh, they just ooze with class, if you will. Uh, they've been friends for 30 years, and, and the success that they've had is, speaks for itself as far as what they know about football. And, and uh, they are good molders of young men. And, and uh, again, congratulations to both Milan and Sweetwater. I'm sure that the disappointment that, uh, that Coach Tucker and the Bulldogs feel uh, will be tempered by the great season that they have as they look back upon this in, in the coming days and weeks and years. What a great effort and a gutty effort by, by Sweetwater, though. Uh, give them all the credit in the world. They took advantage of the few opportunities that they had, and, uh, and they're the class AA state champion for 1993. Well, they'll end this season with 14 wins, and uh, that says a lot to win 14 games in, in their classification and play five playoff games, five tough playoff games. Uh, and then they also play a very tough regular season also. Let's go down to the field for the presentation of the runner-up and championship trophies. Ms. Lisa Austin and Mr. Randy Wilmore, the co-chairs of the 1993 Clinic Bowl. Mr. Ronnie Carter, executive director of the TWSAA. And Dick Sobel, director of public relations for American General Life and Accident Insurance Company, will present the trophies for the Class 2A championship. We begin with the most valuable player awards, both offensively and defensively. For the offense, the most valuable player in this championship, this 2A championship game, number 20 from Milan, James Bond.
the most valuable player for the defense of this 2A championship game goes to number 10, Jamie Upton of Sweetwater. of the trophy to the runner-up coach, Coach John Tucker of Marlin. for the 1993 Clinic Bowl. On offense, James Bonds of Milan, 22 carries, 97 yards unofficially, and one touchdown. On defense, Jamie Upton, two interceptions for Sweetwater, and uh, they were named the outstanding players in today's championship game. For Video Sports, I'm Steve Lusk, along with Billy Ringold and Greg Lusk, telling you that the final score of this class, AA State Championship game, is Sweetwater 10, Milan 6.